And welcome back, handy men and women. Welcome to another episode of How Much Do I Charge? I'm going to go over the same things that go over in each of these videos for those of you who aren't watching all of them. I'm making these because when I first started out in this industry, what I noticed was every time I went to try to find information online about how much to charge through handyman forums and handyman YouTube channels, etc., what I kept finding was the answer always seemed to be, well, it depends. And that's true, it does depend. But you still need some numbers to start with, and then you can work on the it depends part. So I'm going to tell you a few of the things that it will depend on, how you can take the numbers that I will be giving you and turn them into your own numbers. Disclaimers are, number one, I don't want you doing any work that you're not licensed to do. Don't consider any of this. If I'm telling you how much to charge for something, that doesn't mean I'm telling you to do it. I'm just telling you how much I would charge, assuming I was licensed and legal and capable and skilled enough to do it. Also, here's what the prices will vary by. The it depends part. Your prices will go up and down depending on your location and demographics. So that's whether you're in a big city or a small town, a rural area, a populated area, how much people make in your area, whether or not you're in an area that has a whole lot of people that know how to do this work or don't know how to do this work whether there are lots of rentals or mostly homeowners. Uh, another thing is licensing. If you have a license, you can charge more. And I don't mean you can do work without a license and charge less. I mean work that doesn't require a license. You can charge more for that work that doesn't require a license if you happen to have a license in that field anyways. And the home value is going to affect a lot of what you can and can't charge meaning if you're working on an $8 million home up on a mountaintop, you can probably charge more than if you're working on something that's almost classified as a slum in the bad part of town. The quality expectations are going to change, therefore the price is going to change. But even without the quality expectation changing, simple fact of the matter is, rich people pay more than poor people. Now, the prices I'm going to give you, these are for labor only. Materials are always separate. That's going to be what it's going to be. If it's an expensive faucet, the labor, generally speaking, is going to be the same to put in as a cheaper faucet. And finally, these prices are for one-off jobs. So this is not the price I would charge, for example, if you have five items to work on at one address. You're not going to charge these prices for each item. This is the price for if you were to go to that address and do just the one job. When you have more than one job going on at the same address, then you can start discounting because you've kind of already covered your trip fee on the first job. So everything that comes after that, you're really just charging for time. My recommendation for time, again, this changes everywhere you go. But to give you guys numbers, which is what you're looking for, $100 an hour is a nice number. Less than that should mean that you're in an area where you just can't charge 100 And more than that should mean that you're smart and you know how to get what you're worth. So moving on. Today we're talking about outlets. So start right off with a standard replacement of just a standard outlet. Somebody, it's it burnt, it's cracked, it's an old one, and they want to upgrade it. Standard outlet replacement, one outlet, $125, because that's the trip fee. If you want to do two for $125, you could probably do that too. I would probably charge $175 or more for doing two, and really I'd probably be adding $50 for every extra outlet unless I was doing an entire home, in which case doing an entire home, I'm probably going to charge even less per outlet because the number is just going to get astronomical. You know, they don't, you don't want to be ripping people off. You want your prices to be fair. You want them to be good for you. You want them to be on the higher end of the window that you could charge within, but they should also remain fair. Uh, also, right off the bat, this is just a tip. It's not pricing, but when you change outlets, Test them first. And when you change outlets, this is my recommendation, test all the other outlets in that room. Test the outlets in the rooms that are adjacent to that room. You don't want somebody calling you two days later and saying, hey, I had this other outlet that was working, and then after you replaced yours, it stopped working. Because chances are that's not the case. Chances are it was always not working. And when you replaced yours, that one went out. So cover your butt and just make sure that you test all the surrounding outlets so that you don't get blamed for other outlets that stop working. GFCI outlets, 
These are required within six feet by, by the, the general NEC code. This changes state to state. Don't take this as legal advice. Generally speaking, GFCIs need to be anywhere that they're within six feet of a source of water and or on the exterior of the home. I'm a little vague as to whether you have to have them on the exterior if there's a waterproof box over it. I think you don't, but I've seen some things that imply that you did. Keep that in mind. But for a GFCI, again, I charge a little more for those. I charge 150 instead of 125. Yes, that's just for the labor. The reason is because these things have to be strung together in a certain way. And if you don't string them together the right way, you're going to end up spending time troubleshooting. Now, that's not a whole lot of extra work, but I guess generally speaking, what I'm saying is they're more complex. They can be more of a hassle. 99% of the time they're not, but I add a little extra for GFCIs just in case. Next, uh, let's talk about outlet covers real quick. This is not a pricing thing, but when you're doing outlet covers, because you'll have cracked covers over your outlets that they want you to change, I recommend Home Depot. They have a Leviton brand. It's 3 8 Leviton carries a particular one that's 3 8 inch oversized. This helps make sure that you cover up any little gaps and tears in the paint and the drywall that might be around the outlet. They're also nylon and they're unbreakable. Next, switch controlled outlets. I don't charge more for these but you need to know that you might want to, depending on where you're at and what your skills are, to control an outlet with a switch. Generally what you have is, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> you've got your outlet, right? And you've got two places to plug in. When you look on the side of that outlet, there's a bar that goes from the top to the bottom, and that bar joins. So if you connect a black wire here, a power wire to the top, this little bar brings that power down to the bottom as well. When you do a switch-controlled outlet, you're usually going to break that bar. You're going to create a break there so that the two sides can't talk to each other. And when you do that, that takes a little bit of time. So you may end up having to go through an extra outlet if you've never done it before. You might break it. But just keep in mind, I don't charge more for them. Just keep in mind that is a thing you may be asked to do. You can charge the same amount of money, generally speaking. I just want you to know how that's done. Switch control. Yep, that's what we just went over. Troubleshooting. You really need to think long and hard about your troubleshooting fees and how and when you're going to charge. And the reason I say this is because my policy with my company is if I don't solve your problem, I don't charge you any money. And that very rarely bites me in the ass. It has, don't get me wrong, you can lose money with that policy. However, when they know that's your policy, they really appreciate you and it brings a little bit of loyalty when they know that you spend four hours troubleshooting a wiring issue, and since you didn't solve it, you didn't charge them because they have a hard time explaining to the homeowner, why did we pay this guy $400 for four hours of troubleshooting if he didn't even solve the problem? So keep that in mind, and I typically, I'm definitely going to be at a minimum of $400 for four hours of troubleshooting because I'm not going to charge less than $100 for that for sure. However, some of this troubleshooting is really, really easy. So when you go troubleshoot outlets, or any wiring issue for that matter, if you're good at it, once you get some experience and you start just knowing right off the top of your head what most of the common problems are, once you reach that point, uh, you can often solve these in like 10, 15 minutes and then have the problem fixed in another 10 or 15 minutes. Troubleshooting is expensive, guys. If you get it done in 10 or 15 minutes and it's troubleshooting and especially if you're told that somebody else has already tried and failed to figure out what the problem is, you need to be charging more. I would never, ever, ever charge less than maybe 160, 175. That'd be like my bare minimum if the, if the answer was that I had to troubleshoot. Now, if they just said replace the cracked outlet, you charge your 125 or your 150. But if they said to troubleshoot and figure out why and somebody else couldn't figure it out, you absolutely can charge something coming up much closer to $200 for that troubleshooting, even if you figured it out very quickly. Uh, exterior outlets have covers on them, little waterproof covers. Keep in mind always that when you're working on those, they need to be absolutely watertight because if they're not, you're going to have to go back and fix that for free. 
The covers are affordable. They have good directions that come with them, but you do need to make sure that everything is sealed up really well. And by the way, that's an upsell you can do too, because those covers and or being GFCI is required for exterior. So if you've got something, especially if it's not even under a back porch awning or anything, if you see an exterior outlet that doesn't have a waterproof cover, let your property manager know, and they'll probably task you to create a new job and go over there and fix that. And last but not least, dryers, uh, stoves, all of the high voltage outlets. The way that these work, for those of y'all that don't know, is coming into every house, you have two legs of 120. Now, electricity, AC electricity, operates on a sine wave that goes up and down, right? So what they do is they take, you, you can have a positive 120 and you can have a negative 120. The stuff you plug in doesn't care. All it cares about is that it's doing this, but your house receives a positive 120 and a negative 120. You can run from either of those out to a leg and have 120 along that whole leg. If you have something that requires 240, what you're going to do is you're going to have one wire from the main coming into your house, you're going to be tapped into one of those from the circuit breaker that taps into the negative side of the 120 and one that taps into the positive side. And when you tap into both of those, the difference between them is 240. So you're going to have two hot wires coming in. Okay? When you go and you have what you'll find, here's the work order you'll receive. Let me just rephrase this. You're going to receive a work order someday where somebody needs you to change the plug the outlet itself for the dryer or the stove or any other high voltage item. You're going to receive that work order where they ask you to change that outlet out because the person just bought a new washer and dryer and their plug doesn't fit the outlet that you have. Now prior to, I could be wrong on the date, but I believe prior to 1996, and a lot of your homes that you're working on are going to be prior to that, they did not require a ground wire in those outlets. After 1996, the code got updated and all of them had to have a ground wire. So when number one, when you go replace these, charge a lot of money, guys. 200 plus for sure. People are scared of high voltage wiring. People don't know anything about it. A lot of handymen, if you're going to tackle this, you need to know a lot of other handymen just won't. They're scared of it. Now, you need to know what you're doing. I'm not telling you to just go do these willy-nilly without actually knowing what you're doing. But if you do take the time to learn, preferably from a licensed electrician, what you're doing, you can do these if it's legal in your state without a permit, blah, blah, blah. I'm not telling you not to do work you're not allowed to do. But charge good money, 200 plus easy. And know that what you need to look for when you do these is if you have a pre-1996, if you have the old style, a lot of times those are going to have the ground wire available. It's just going to be wrapped up inside the box because when they ran the wiring, most wiring has the ground wire in it. So when they ran it, they just wrapped the ground wire up and you'll be able to just use it on your new outlet. However, sometimes they don't. You have two options when they don't have that ground wire. Number one is you can run a new wire. You do need to be licensed for that everywhere as far as I know to run any new wiring but you'll need to run a new wire, or there's one you can buy that already has this little extra ground wire attached. It's insulated and everything. And the purpose of that is you basically put the outlet in, you wire it up similar to how the old outlet was wired, but then you're going to take your new wire and you have to ground it somewhere that's a proper place. Now, I don't know your location or if it's legal where you're at. I just want you to know that if it is legal for you to do that, they do sell the outlets that have that ground wire ready for you to take and run and ground in a proper ground. <clears throat> that just about covers it for outlets. I am going to reiterate one more time, don't do work you're not allowed to do. And then I also want to remind you all, because this is the how much do I charge episode, I have a form that when you become a member of this channel, like a paying member, one of the membership levels, is that I will send you my form, and it started as a jobs list, and then I started trying to add pricing to it. It's an interactive spreadsheet where you can kind of play with it with your numbers and tailor it to yourself. I want to be very clear, it's not complete. It is not complete. It is not complete. Don't expect it to be complete. 
but I have started adding my pricing to it, and it's a constant work in process. When I have a little bit extra time, I update it, and I update it, and I update it. So if you become a member, you'll receive that if you're at the right membership level. However, I decided to do an alternative, too. So for $25, if you want to email me at bulletproofhandymanbusiness at gmail.com, shoot me an email, let me know you'd like to purchase the list. Whatever email address you emailed me that request from, I will email back to that address the list with the pricing on it, the incomplete pricing, and an invoice so that you can click and pay me electronically. Of course, the other option is to just become a member. And in the future, when I do finally get this list to a level that I consider to be complete, which is going to take quite a bit of work, I'll be selling that list for $50. But right now, you can get it at $25. Just email me at bulletproofhandymanbusiness at gmail.com. Also, if you have any other questions any about pricing or anything, everyone watching this channel, email me with questions that you have. I will likely email you back within a week or so because I am busy. But I'll almost certainly email you back, and I might use it to make a video for this channel if it's a really good question. Otherwise, I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you're out there killing it. Thanks for joining.